It is not enough to allow dissent. We must demand it. For there is much to dissent from. We dissent from the fact that millions are trapped in poverty while the nation grows rich. We dissent, we dissent from the conditions and hatreds which deny a full life to our fellow citizens because of the color of his skin. We dissent from the monstrous absurdity of a world where nations stand o'clock in the morning, they're clink, clink, clinking down the street. It drives me crazy. The cart is stolen, the cans are stolen, metal is stolen, it's taken from construction sites. In there, another guy with a bike and a shopping cart in there right now. It's a tragedy because they don't have a place to go to the toilet for those who are homeless. They don't have an income outside of your garbage. Alliance Metals is the hornet's nest that feeds the hornets that sting the local people that live in this area. the busiest recycling centers in the state of California. How you doing? How's business? I am the redeemer. I redeem the money to the person who walks in. As a recycler, you're basically a scavenger or a miner, and, and you, you take what you can get. People who mine gold are very happy when they hit lead. That's a byproduct, but they still make money. It's the same here. You have to take what you can get, and that's what they do. They all focus on the same, on the same uh, basic items, the plastic, the cans, and the glass. Where else but America can you make $100 a day picking trash up off the streets? You know, it's like the old days when my great-grandfather came to this country, they told him, there's money in the streets, there's gold to be made. And although it's not literally true, figuratively it is. I mean, you can get up, be dead broke, no education, no skills, get yourself a shopping cart, walk around the streets, and make $100. piss everyone off because I pull more stuff to uh, any recycling center than anyone can. I tie the exact same amount of weight to one side as the other. I put all glass in the middle and so it balances it out. No bullshit. I pulled like uh, 800 pounds of glass, 50 pounds of cans, about 200 pounds of plastic, all at once. 
I would say it's a 15 mile day because I have to hit every street that a dump truck would hit on a truck route. The roads you go on, I have to be in the bike lane because the bike lane's flat usually, right? And so when there's a road, you know, that goes like this, and I've got all that weight on there. And if you pull on the wrong side, the whole thing's gonna flip over because of the road. Every day I got it all worked out, what I'm gonna do, where I'm gonna go, and who I'm gonna avoid, because there's other recyclers who try to figure out my routes and stuff, so I gotta keep my route secret, because there's a whole lot of other recyclers trying to do the same thing. You can see up here there's a camera. We have a camera on both sides uh, for scrap metal because scrap metal is a high theft item uh, which costs the state and the public a lot of money. We photograph every piece of scrap that comes in. We service over 600 customers a day. She's under a lot of stress. People are trying to cheat. People are screaming. People are switching barrels. Yeah. What's wrong? I can't weigh your glass twice, though. That's all right. Yeah, we'll, throw, we'll throw this ticket away. You already it? People are going to try and hit us left and right. They're going to argue at the scale. They're going to fight for the better price. They're going to try and get what they want. Uh, they're going to argue the whole way, and then they're going to walk out with fifty to hundred dollars and come back again tomorrow happy. I'm happy when I get at least like one six, but this is pretty good. Oh! And last night, between the two of us, right, worked twenty four hours. I guess it's not that good a pay, you know, between two people, but it beats nothing. Once you live on the street, like me, shit, it ain't gonna be my mom or my dad or fucking anyone who's gonna help me out, really. It's not gonna be fucking the preacher, the church, anything. The street's gonna pay me. In one way or another, the street's gonna pay me. I'm uh, Frederick George Griffin II. I'm a uh, local painter. He's been uh, painting in uh, the streets of Oakland for uh, some uh, 40 years. I do quite a bit of my painting out of the uh, trunk of my car and uh, take advantage of uh, uh, parking lots or the sidewalk. In general, I try to find some area that has a low interchange with the uh, public. Well, naturally, I have to mention my uh, best friend and uh, my partner. She, uh, she really does most all of it herself. I uh, provide her the transportation. If we do part, I'm going to make sure she has a uh, set up somewhere. It's a very kind-hearted man. Yeah, he's a good person. He worries about other people more than he worries about himself. <laughs> I, I was roadieing for our band. He's, like he's a drummer. Him. We met backstage. One, two, one, two. In the 80s, I was the drummer of Polka Sight. There was 11 of us. 
This is a lot of horns. We played up and down California for about two years straight. We had a clarinet, two trumpets, trombone, two saxophones, oh, and uh, two accordion players. <laughs> Everyone who recycles is just not a criminal or a crook or, or wrong. People have had some hardships in life. Some people were born into poverty. Some people were born with a half a chance to really make it out here. I'm not a kind of person who is really fond of bylaws or programs or things like that. I've been living you know, like a Mustang, so to say. I've been out here and I'm used to not having a lot of rules and regulations to abide by, when to get up, when to go to sleep, that's like jail to me. I got to realize that in 16 years, I'll be 70 years old. Well, I'm not gonna be here very long. I mean, I'm not living a healthy lifestyle. Fortunately, I, I'm, I'm still physically strong, you know, and mentally strong. You know. I think recycling is good because it's um, legitimate. Yeah, it could pay good. I'd like to do it on a bigger scale or a higher level. My mother, who basically raised me, her and my father had divorced by the time I was three. My mother was more of a man at the age of 21 and 22 than I am now, you know, because at that age she was um, raising a family, taking care of her bills and everything like that, and making sure that my older brother and I had what we needed. This whole family has always been brought up in the church. There's a scripture in Proverbs that says, train up a child in the way he should go, and it'll never depart from him. We were trained, and we were taught and trained to walk this walk of faith. Even though we went off track in this walk, the walk never left us. As a matter of fact, Landon was ordained. He was working in the ministry 100%. What happened? I'm going to admit that, you know, it wasn't like, okay, well, society did this to me and, you know, it was other people's fault. It was definitely my fault that I ended up in the position that I am today. Right about the time we turned 18 or so was really when the uh, crack cocaine epidemic uh, hit our community and it hit us like a ton of bricks. It caused our loved ones throughout the community to steal, people that never stole before, uh, and they were stealing from their own families. You know, there was, it was easy access. Take your family television, you know, take your mother's jewelry. We struggled with him until finally one day, you know, we agreed, my mother and I, we're just gonna wash our hands of this guy. We're gonna let him go. And it was very hard for my mother. They all love me, they, you know, my family love me. They always say, well, you know, if you need any help or anything, just call us. Because even if they came down and said, hey, get in, come on, I would probably tell them no.
I think I have a, a tolerance for a lot of things. I mean, this is not the prettiest neighborhood, you know? I mean, I don't, I don't mind a little bit of scruffiness and I don't mind a little bit of edginess. But, you know, there's some things that I, I really don't like. I don't like the drug use and I don't like the, you know, people urinating and defecating in public. I'm not gonna pee in the house. I go on the bush and I take a pee and then complain about that. Somebody, somebody want to pee with you and you pee yourself. One of the things that's wrong with Alliance Metals is the fact that Jay still will take shopping cart business. We get complaints about the possibility of his receiving stolen goods. We're seeing more and more metal being taken from public facilities and, and even private homes. One of my customers is observing Jay's impact on the neighborhood. He likened him to a modern day plantation owner. It's not very nice, it's not very flattering, but if you think about it, it's pretty accurate. Here you've got a, a, a rich white guy comes into a neighborhood and he's got a whole bunch of black people that, poor black people, that he provides a subsistence, but that's it. And he's making a ridiculous profit off of their labors. I'm not a saint, I'm a businessman, and we do make a profit here. I built this business from nothing. Uh, I put 16 years of my life into it. Uh, it's a business that I'm proud of. It's, uh, it's an industry that I can feel good about. It's socially responsible. It's environmentally sound. It's sustainable. The Recycling Center brings poor people from all over the city to West Oakland to be close to the Recycling Center. If he wasn't here, sure, there would be poor people in West Oakland, but not nearly as many. The attitude of the, the owner of the Recycling Center is that he is helping the poorest of the poor. And I question that. I don't think he's helping them. If he, if he really wanted to help them, he would let them have a job, uh, a real job, not be a contractor that he makes a lot of money off of the stuff that they bring, and they make a little bit, just enough money to get the crack around the corner. Not to say that all of Alliance Metals customers are doing drugs, but there are a group. And he's financing, you know, a, a local drug economy here. And the thing I like about Recycle most of all, it help others not commit crimes. Who like, people who like to do honest work and get paid. To me, that is the best thing that can happen to us as individuals that have so little. The people who have moved here want these people to simply no longer exist in their neighborhood. Well, this has been their neighborhoods for 100 years. This is the neighborhood where the poor, the unemployed, this is where they end up. This is West Oakland. Sixteenth Street Station was Ellis Island West. Many working class families settled right there near the station, which was West Oakland. West Oakland was indeed an ethnic community of Irish, Italians, Portuguese, Germans, and black folks who came in to either work the railroads or work lumber mills. But then along comes the war. Jobs open up in the Bay Area. There's a shortage, men being drafted going off to war. So along comes this in-migration of black people from the South for these lucrative jobs in the defense industry. Overnight, Oakland made this transition from this white ethnic community, now predominantly Southern black transplant town. 7th Street became Black Oakland, and you had 
the whole range of people in the entire spectrum of the African-American community lived in West Oakland. As a kid, I remember flourishing businesses from drugstores with blacks with pharmaceutical backgrounds to bakers and cleaners and, you know, people who ran restaurants, people who had barbershops, people who had clothing stores all over West Oakland. But let me tell you something. The recycling, it's not a new phenomenon. We were recycling in the 40s, man. Those same guys who are now walking around with the recycling bin, you know what they did when I was a kid? They picked fruit and vegetables. 10 cents a bucket, 15 cents a bucket, 50 cents a box. They at least had that opportunity then. They don't have that anymore. So the fruit they have to pick are cans off the street bottles off the street. That's the fruit they have to pick now. The three guys called me all night long for two nights. They literally got half of my load on Wednesday and Thursday of this week. I lost a hundred bucks on both nights. All I can do since they're stalking me is I can do criminal acts to them too. I mean, it's not like it's not mine. It is mine. You lay claim to it, and someone else comes and follows you and watches your spots and learns exactly which garbage cans is all the good shit, and it took you 15 years to figure that out? That's your shit. If they do come up to me this week, I'm gonna have a baseball bat. I'm gonna fuck up every single one of their bites. Every single one of them. And if they physically assault me, I'm gonna physically fuck them up. I'm quite sure that they're criminals. You know what I mean? I'm a criminal too, though. That's why I can't get a job. Look at all these people. All these people are working very hard to get this. Very hard. No one here can get a fucking job. I mean, this is the lowest form of work you can get in the United States of America, is what we're doing. This is a hustle for an American, you know? I got there and he didn't look right. And I told him, I said, come on, Landers. If you can't get out of here, I said, I'll drag you out of here, man. You're my best friend, come on. She carried me out. She helped drag me out with her little bitty self. <laughs> she helped drag me out and um, got me to, to a place that there was some cushion at and I laid down. And then I ended up very disoriented. I stood up and I fell. And she stayed with me and had somebody go call 911. And they ran some x-rays and they found out that I had a lacerated spleen and I had internal bleeding. There was two other gurneys in there. And when I looked to the side and I seen one of my cousins. And he said, my brother Ruben has a place out in Vallejo. I'm gonna tell him to come find you. I'm the director of a program for men who are wanting to make changes in their lives from drugs and alcohol. I really believe that this program can really work for those who choose to come. I myself, who is an ex-addict, have concerns about his uh, situation to help him any way I can. Nothing grows unless from a seed unless it dies first. So, you know, so I've been through my valleys of weeping. I've been out here for a while. And I want to get back to some type of normalcy in my life. How you doing, cousin? What's up, cousin? It's so good to see you, man. I'm glad you made it down there. You ready to make this move now? Yeah, I just got to get a little cleaned up and do a thing, and I'll be glad to. Did you bring me a, yeah, yeah, I got a few that's things? Good. That's good. That's good. Yeah, I love you too, so it won't take long, man. Be like, yeah, let me just go take care of this. All right, man. I'll be glad, I'll be right man. Here, man. I know you did. You, you, you are here, and that's the great thing about it. For sure. Yeah, I'll be right back, right? I told him, Landon, if you want to get his stuff together, 
that I have a bed waiting for him, so I'm here to pick him up. A lot of the family members haven't seen Landon in years. He haven't seen his brother in 15 years. When you're out here like in, in, into drugs like this, you don't want your family member to see you. You know, you're always trying to stay away from them because you feel ashamed, you feel guilty, embarrassed, you know. It's just a humiliating situation. Getting off of the streets, the concrete, tired of bushes, makeshift homes. I was wondering why it's taking him so long, you know, and I tried to call the hospital. They didn't answer the fucking phone. And the next day, he went to sleep and he never woke up. Because of how I survive, and because of how people look at fucking our life, it's like you're living on borrowed air. Not borrowed time, it's like borrowed air, borrowed fucking everything. That's life on the street, though, really. Me and Jason met on a methadone clinic. We would talk every morning. I thought he was cool because he listened to what I had to say. And most people didn't. Right on. I'll be right down there. I used to work on the street. I was 19 or 20 when I first started working the street.
I didn't want to do it, but I thought I had no choice. When we started going out, I quit working. I didn't work at not one more time. Let's get this thing and then we're done. There's the last one going that way. You know? <laughs> and then we'll loop around. August 1st. That was the day I left from over there in Oakland for my shanty I had to come here. I learned that I wasn't loving myself out there or anyone else particularly, you know, I had common courtesy, but I was destroying myself out there, you know. Here is a person who wants to better himself again, you know. There was a person who didn't, you know, care whether he lived or died. And it wasn't a Garden of Eden, you know. Yeah. It was a Babylon, more or less. It was rough. Whatever your goals are and whatever plans you're making for that goal, it's going to require some commitment. It's going to require some perseverance, you know. It's going to require you to, to develop the principles of patience because everything ain't going to fall in your lap like you want it to. Sin is always present with me. No matter what, whatever, whatever sin you come with, you try to sift me, mm -hmm. I'm still not going back to the crack house. But I'm going to do something that's going to keep my motivation level up high. My plan is to stay sober, to stay healthy, to be God-fearing. Lord Jesus Christ is my Savior, Lord and Savior. To one day find me a wife before I get too old, you know. <laughs> I'm 54 now, okay, hurry up. <laughs> my whole purpose was for me to get myself in order so I could help other people. Yes, we do, Lord. We thank you for this day that you have I believe I was called to do that. But I would have never been able to do that from there. I want to one day get a truck, put some sides up on it, and spend my days recycling. But right now, I'm just happy to be alive. I'm just thankful that I'm not on drugs. I'm thankful that I don't have to live uh, under a bridge or on the sidewalk somewhere. I'm, I'm, I'm thankful. I was in the hospital for uh, lymphedema, so my lymph system is fucked up, which is a result from endocarditis, HIV positive, or hep C, or whatever. It's really hard to just keep going. Normally every Sunday, I come out to my father's house so I can see my son. That's real important to me because my kid is uh, one of the reasons why I am try to live a normal life. The only reason, you know, I'd like him to live with me, but right now he's got a good opportunity living with my dad to graduate from school and go to college and make something of himself. Yeah, see, JJ, he grew up in a trailer trailer park with us until he was, uh, what, four? Like, three. No, he was like two and a half. Two and a half. Two and a half. He grew up with us yeah. until he like, was two and a half in a trailer park. And now he's almost seven. But he was a lot different then. He insisted on wearing a bandana, you know? And, uh, uh, and, and, and he was like kind of like a little thug, 
but the, uh, I let him dress and do whatever he wanted to do, though. You know what I mean? Jason's getting so he he can't pull the carts like he used to. His his legs are really bad. But when he's feeling good, he can go out and get cans and stuff. So it's something that makes him still feel proud of himself that he can bring in a little bit of money. This is my favorite. He loved the beach. Those were good times. Jason was a very sweet kid, and he was always liked. And he, he'd always say thank you and stuff like that when he was really young. That's when Jason achieved his black belt. That was a very big event for him. And then when he was 13, he was speed. At first, I didn't notice any of the, the drug use. It just all of a sudden became apparent. We put him in rehab. Speed is the worst drug I've ever seen. It's a Jekyll and Hyde kind of drug. We didn't hear about it until he was older, and it generally came out when he was in a rage, mm -hmm. usually under some kind of substance. Neither one of them want to say anything about it. I think something did happen, though. If you confronted his brother about it, his brother was always very evasive about it. But he also indicates that something did definitely happen. I wasn't raised in too normal of a, a setting. My dad liked to drink and, and stuff like that. JJ, can you move out of the way of the TV? Hey, I know how to do it. You, you know do how it. to do it? Here. You do it the same way you turn on the video. Okay, go do that. Such a good one. I really love JJ. I'm a much better person around him than I was when Jason was being brought up. He's kind of got a chance to prove that he can raise a kid. And it's cool with me because it, I think he'll be able to. I mean, I'm going to be there too, but I'm kind of not doing so good health-wise. And another one. I really got to cope with the fact about how life's just a fucking dream. Because really, that's the only thing that makes me get through the day. It's just hoping when I do go, which I know for a fact is going to be a lot sooner than most, that I'll still be in someone's dream. Up the hill, up the hill. <sighs> okay. Thank you. Get a beer, I need some bubbles. <laughs> and this will help. I think I better go to see a doctor. I hope I don't have cancer. I feel nauseous all the time, you know. No, it's <coughs> to the toilet now. My 
my whole family. They don't even want to talk to me. Just because uh, you know, I give everything away, so, you know, that's their excuse. I'm 50 something years old, they, are, they, they still treat me like a little child. Now they don't want to see me. Uh, I should have been never born into this place. Some days that's how I, I get. Finally, I was able to get a fair uh, hearing for Social Security. Now we got an apartment, recycling now, and having at least a monthly supplement. It covers most of our rent. Now we got running water, you know, and, uh, you know, we got, we got Man, everything that you need to take care of yourself. You know what I mean? I'm able to bathe and, you know, just being able to shave every day and brush my teeth is really cool. Shit, we got a toilet now. Without a toilet, life sucks, man. And it's not a lot of food, but we got food, you know. Uh, we cook we cook all kind of stuff. I can barbecue better than she can. I think I probably make better spaghetti. But the, she makes better um, stuff like breakfast stuff. I found this for my kid when I was recycling just the other day. I still got to clean it up a little bit. I give that to my kid so he can learn stuff. Now we kind of back to, back to the basics. And every once in a while, you know, very rarely, but you know, you know, and, and by the way, we find this when we're recycling too, you know. Hey, how you doing? Hi, this is Landon calling you. We have to change our schedule for tomorrow. We're swamped with some business and we have to take precedence, so we have to do it tomorrow, okay? Thank you very much. Bye-bye. We'll play it by ear and see how it goes. I enjoy working. It is a responsibility and you have to be accountable. So it does give me direction. It does help keep me stable, you know, and I'm gonna take this with me wherever I go. I don't miss being on the streets, people making you get up and move. You have to tear it down and move on to another place. I don't miss that, no. But what I do miss is people. Um, the love that we did share for one another and looking out for one another. You find it greater in that society than you do in this society. Because um, I can walk down the street right now, and if I don't say hello to nobody, nobody will say hello to me. We have to look out for one another and care for one another because no one outside is going to look out and care for us. Oh, God, dude. Hey, okay. She actually came in uh, one time, and just by her condition, we, we already knew that she needed some help. <coughs> Hi. Hey, you know. hey how are you? Okay. okay. Have a seat. Thank you. Yeah, is everything okay? Oh, well. It's very rare for someone to see a Korean homeless person on the street. Nailed it, uh, May 10th. Yeah. I, I, Her boyfriend weird. recently passed away, and I, I think she was very deeply saddened by that. And that's kind of affecting her uh, mental state and just um, her emotional state. And. I got a little bit about her and her father and saying that her father passed away and I think she was very deeply saddened about that. 
Okay, thank you. Yeah, and if there's anything, if there's any other problems or... She says she had family in San Francisco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, okay. She says she actually tried to call them before, but no one would ever pick up. She has this sister that is very well off, and that Hayok is in this situation. I just don't understand how that could happen. She doesn't have an ID right now, so we're trying to apply for her ID at the DMV so she can apply for food stamps or general assistance or just something that could just keep her afloat. Hey, I've been uh, waiting for like 90 days to get this, uh, they said, at the most 60 days. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Her health isn't looking too good. I mean, the best thing to do is getting her set up with welfare and Medi-Cal so she can get adequate hospital services from the county general hospital. Actually, um, the ID came. Oh, great. And I wanted you to open it. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. So now, um, so with the ID, we can definitely start applying for yeah. the, the general system. Oh, That's great. Is, is all the information right? Like all the, uh, the birthday? Yeah. yeah. Now I have my ID. <laughs> Finally. Yeah. Yeah, and it's a good thing too, because I was sick, you know. I know. And I needed to lie down a lot, so. Yeah. All right. All right, thanks a lot. Thank you, thank you. No, no problem. OK. Anytime. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Easy. Yeah, I will. Be safe. Yeah, I will. Okay. Thanks. OK. Thanks a lot. Thanks for bringing it over. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> about Fred again, you know. Oh, he's still babysitting me. <laughs> well, maybe it's I was hearing voices again. Poor people are seen as powerless people. Poor people are seen as people who don't participate. Poor people tend to be seen as people that you can dismiss, okay? They don't vote. They're not there. 
So if people don't have the capacity to push the levers of power, then we don't talk about that. Okay, anybody else with a ticket? Ticket. We've got a ticket. Okay, hold on, I just got a head count, and then we'll come back out. Give me a second. My name is Jay Anders, president of Alliance Metals. I've been operating Alliance Metals for 16 years. We are a business that is still operating in this economy. If you continue with annual reviews and politicizing our businesses, we will continue to put on hold hiring, equipment orders, and normal business functions until the end of each and every hearing. I have three vendors waiting tomorrow to find out if we have a $30,000 equipment order going in or not based on tonight's decision. Thank you very much for your time. Okay, I show a number of other speakers cards and I wanted to seek the direction of the chair. Your name, sir? My name is Jason Witt and I've been a recycler for about 15 years. I was in this neighborhood in the last no play. And most people call it Dollar Town. I'm going to tell you right now that uh, recycling not only has saved my life, my girlfriend was working on, on the street as a prostitute. She no longer has to do that because of recycling. As far as I'm concerned, if you take away the recycle center, crime will rise again in Oakland. It's worse than you can ever think. Actually, actually, the recycle center is probably one of the safest places in West Oakland. As a person who, who works very, very hard for my money every day, I don't want to go to jail. I'm sick and tired of going to jail. And until I can get a job in Oakland, until I can get a job, I think that you should allow me to at least recycle. And all I'm doing is taking garbage. I'm not taking cars. I'm not taking cars. I'm not selling drugs. I do this now. I came back around 3 o'clock, and the place is surrounded with cops and they were turning people away. And um, they didn't say whether it was for the day or until further notice or anything like that. I came here earlier and I couldn't even turn in my recycle. Because I, I know I need money, I'm hungry, you know? I can't even give me nothing to eat because I can't turn my recycle in. Apparently, um, we ended up buying some pg e wire and uh, we shouldn't have bought it, it was golden. They searched for the wire. About a half hour, 45 minutes later is when they found it. They talked to all the workers and asked questions. Nobody really knew anything. Right now they're still in there talking to Jay. I believe it might have been an honest mistake. I think they, uh, the city council woman from last night was upset with Jay. And honestly, I think it was a setup. 17 pounds for $7, that's the big problem with the police? I don't think so. She ain't losing her job, you know. She ain't going nowhere, just like the recycle center ain't going nowhere. Leave us alone. Let us survive how we survive. This is how we survive. My job is to make sure that there is not illegal activity going on. And there is a legal activity going on there. So it's not a personal vendetta. If he doesn't want police there, he should stop doing illegal stuff. It shows, amongst other things, that for two and a half years, the Oakland Police and the City Administrator's Office have been gathering material about Alliance Metals in an attempt to shut it down. So we're working together with a team to uh, defend Jay, defend his license, but we're shocked. I don't know what else is there. I don't know if this is it. I don't know if it's the tip of the iceberg.
from the shelter. I just get up, kick a shower, run for the bus. Well, it takes about 10 minutes from here to the BART, and then it takes about an hour from there to Emeryville. I have to be doing things, you know, I can't, I'll go crazy otherwise. I've been taking three days out and then coming back one day. It's a bit too much, but you know, I got myself in the mess, so I have to stay above the water. <laughs> I go find my cart and then go to the recycle place. It's nice to be out and then come back, you know. I, I appreciate it a lot more anyway, you know. the methadone clinic, so I start throwing up. I get literally sick, but that's, that's also because I've been shooting dope since I was a kid. Yeah, man, when I miss the clinic, I fucking really fuck. I don't know why you miss it, bro. Fuck, if I had methadone right now, dude, I'd be there every fucking morning. Dude, something. I don't I don't know if I can, how fucking, uh, that's what I mean. The first time I kicked heroin, was uh, right before I turned 13 or 14 years old. Yes. But you did, you tied that off perfectly for me. And I kicked in a drug program in Oakland. Oh, shit. That's totally... Like, they tell you, you'll never be the same. You'll never be able to drink, like, at your graduation for school. There's no way. So then you say, fuck school, and fuck the graduation, and fuck the world, you know what I mean? Half of it, and hold the other half in your mouth. When you're a kid and you go into one of those, those things kind of set your life up. Some fucking veins grow back. You're a drug addict the rest of your life. In December, you're having fucking some free slots. Wish I never went. Don't use that one, bro. Use this one, man. I'm telling you, Jason. Fuck, man. No, because you got hep C and I got hep C too. So what? My blood's so fucked up if I introduce any new hep C to it. Start to feel a little better. I'm gonna pull you because you don't look too good. I'm gonna pull you to the hospital, all right? Come on, step. Now, fucking step up, step up, slide. Yeah, now. Go, slide back, slide back. All right, stay. Stay smiling, you want a cigarette? Not like a clown, you want a cigarette? Do not get off. It'll rip all the fucking bags. Do not get off. 
Heather, please. You make the wrong move over this way, dude, and you're gonna fucking, you're gonna get seriously hurt. If it falls over, you're gonna get fucking hurt. Do you get it? Stop moving. Heather, wake uh. up. Ber Berkeley PD's back there, so if you wake the fuck up and sit up. I am sick. This time I'm not fucking around. Look, look behind you. Look behind you. Oh. So wake up. I, I was already awake. Okay, I'm not trying to be mean. It's just due to serious. Heather, I'm sorry, but I have to tell you this. Why don't you take the bike and go meet me at the fucking recycle center, okay? All right, see you later. Got what you want. Heather, take a couple dollars. Son of a bitch. What I'm thankful for today is that right now I can look back and I can see all the errors and the mistakes that I made in life. I was told that I'll push a shopping cart down the street, sleeping under a bridge or a freeway for the rest of my life. I, I was told those things and I got around people who agreed with that. Lord, I got to trust in you. I want to come out of this addiction. I want a wife. I want to live a quiet and peaceable life. And it wasn't until this year that I obtained some of that. <laughs> and I'm still waiting on the Lord for the rest. No, they say I was trying to kill myself. I said, you're doing that. I said, you're doing that. I'm banging my head on the wall because I couldn't stand it for more. Everything hurts. Ross! Hey, can you put me up for a couple nights? Yeah, you will. Yeah. Oh, thank you to God. It's crazy. It hasn't got any better. It hasn't got any worse, but it hasn't got any better. I want this madness to go away. I do want it to go away. It's a, it's a real mess. I, I'm sorry, but I don't know how, um, how to figure it out. But I hope it goes away. I, I think it's because my daddy's dead, Fred's dead. And I don't have a family and children. 
I think that's what's destroying me. What have I done to deserve this? put a fucking three-day notice pay or quit just the other day and my rent's not even up he basically wanted us to have no outside use he wanted us to have all indoor use of the apartment and that just does not fly not when you're paying that much money rent so i had to use the inside of my apartment for everything that normally would do outside So much roach spray sprayed all over everything, ate away all the pictures. And all that's black mold. It'll come back so fast, like within like about a week, that shit'll come back. Heather's kind of lost it. And a lot of things have happened, right? But I'll stick by her. I came out here to bring a little recycle I got because I'm still doing that stuff. I got the company's truck over here. And uh, the 4th of July is coming up tomorrow, Wednesday. And I uh, thought if a few people wanted to come out of here and go over there and enjoy a day at the park and eat some barbecue, they're welcome to come. Hey, Miss Kay, how you doing? Good, how are you? You know, I've been trying to get people to come out on the 4th and have some barbecue with me out there in Vallejo. So I'll probably come out here tomorrow and ride around. If anybody want to go back, they're welcome to. Hey, Lynn. Yes, sir. Hey, can I put my thing right there? Yeah, of course. I'm just, I got a, a one barrel of stuff. Yeah. I ain't got shit. I just had to, I live in my car right now, and yeah. I had to get all the shit out of my car, dude. I understand. I got fucking no room, man. I understand. I understand. Said, Fuck this, I'm coming to get rid of this shit. You know I'm pastoring the church now, huh? Yeah. Okay. That's what I heard. So quit cursing at your pastor, friend. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, bud. Hey, right on, Father. Nah, don't go all that straight. <laughs> I can't bring certain spirits in the realm of other spirits that are living clean and sober or trying to do the right thing, and then you bring an element in, even whether they're your friend or not. And they come and they bring the spirit of alcohol, the spirit of drugs, and the spirit of cursing, things that we just don't do. And so you don't want to bring that influence into people who's trying to steer themselves away from that. It's time for a change, man. I come out of that stuff, and I never want to return to it. But the truth is, I love those people down there more than the people that I've become accustomed to now because I can understand their plight. And I want to embrace them. I want to hug them. (sighs) 
And it's not easy. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, you wait a minute. I'm going to ask if we all got shut down at a real table. Yeah. Yeah, I learned that a person like me with my character and personality, I never get sick and tired of getting sick and tired of getting sick and tired. Because I always go work because I can tolerate too much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it a problem, you think? Hmm? You think it's a problem? When you can tolerate a whole bunch of stuff, yeah. yeah. Because you'll never get past what you're willing to tolerate. Yeah. You'll never in life I get past what you're willing to that. tolerate. I got really? to the point where I wasn't willing to tolerate it anymore. Yeah, me too. I'm uh, yeah, I, I, I wasn't willing to tolerate it. That's, That's where I'm at. Totally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Look. A lot of people do some real fucked up shit to me, right? And I'm really unhappy with the person who Heather's hanging around with, man. I don't give a shit if they got a relationship. I really don't. What I'm really upset about, though, what really makes me cry, is that all these feelings I had, fuck, what if they didn't mean anything to her? I hope it doesn't fuck up the whole thing for me because I might just get so fucking angry that I'll do something that I'll never be able to come back from. My sister built a house in Africa. She spends half the time in Southwest Africa. She doesn't answer the phone, you know. I keep trying to call her. I just, she's got a message machine. I just have to talk to it. This is it. Doorbell doesn't work. I got to write to her. My dad, my only dad, like my one of my best friends. When we were kids, I go, Dad, I'm running away from home. It don't let go of me. He never let go of me. I said, don't let go of me. I didn't trust this world. pick up a couple of friends of mine, Oscar and Sheila. I had told them that if I ever got an opportunity and they wanted to come out and get away from this environment, and I would come and get them and the opportunity finally came. 
Well, hello, Sheila. Oh, hey, good. Yeah, Landers is here. I know it's kind of surprising, but if you're going to do anything, you need to do it as soon as possible. If you want to prepare yourself to come, you can. I know it's not easy to wake up and be transferred, <laughs> but take your time okay. and get up. You know, the same thing as my cousin, when he came and got me, if, if he hadn't come and got me, I wasn't going to catch no bus, you know. I wouldn't have made it. Now, can Next I use time your phone for a minute? This? Hello? Who is this? It's Oscar. I'm on my way to the program, okay? I'm going to the program. And Vallejo? Hey, don't worry, okay? Love you, Naya. I'm, I'm cleaning my up. We both are. My kids always want to come down here. They want to see what mom's all about. My daughter, she's never known for the past 18 years, even though she's spoken to both of us. She doesn't know we're homeless and we live outside. I've never let them see that. I'll pull this to the recycling center. No, we're both gonna pull it. We did this together. Yeah. We're taking the loading together. Okay. But the last one we're going to pull together. All right. You ready? Yeah. All right. I'm glad for Oscar and Sheila because they have a heart to want to do something different in their life. We're doing it. Now I know that this is my lifelong mission is to uh, reach back and pull somebody up. We never split up really, it was just, we separated from different places, that's it. But we didn't split up. And I never was with anybody. A friend of mine was, was uh, staying up here before, and a couple of my other friends stayed up here just through the years. Right now, we got our time up here. So we'll hold on to it for as long as we can. You know what I mean? Wherever you are, it's healthier to be on the street than in a house. As animals, we need fresh air. And being indoors is really not the way any animal lives. We got a place to go to sleep right here, you know. We got a way to cook our food. We got like, uh, you know, it's 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 just it's just better. Marvin Patterson. Beloved, we are here. Miss Red. Beloved, we 
Last couple of days, I've been packing up uh, 21 years of my life down here. Photos of my kid, that's my daughter. She's now 21 years old. My wife and I started together. She was breastfeeding at the counter. I was out back uh, cutting metal and uh, waiting on customers. All of my kids have worked the waste station, can station. They would climb into the bins and I'd have them clean out the bins and the gunk. And just letting them know, you know, they could always have this operation. If they don't want to get an education, they could do this for the rest of their life. And uh, so now they're all getting educations. They're not going to be garbage men like their uh, father. My children have all uh, had a nice life growing up. We've had a nice lifestyle. Time to move on. So that's the end of that. My favorite one to throw away, City of Oakland action against us. All this was the evidence they brought against us, plus 3,000 pages of documentation. Uh, we ended up with a very good settlement. The city ended up paying us $75,000 and gave us an ironclad uh, contract that now gives us more rights and protections than any other recycler in Oakland. This final battle clinched uh, making the sale possible. Sir, congratulations. Here's the I think that we've done all that we can, and now it's time for fresh blood to come in, new people wanting to make a mark for themselves. <laughs> I will still see you for a very long time. All right, don't forget about keeping me in your dream. You know I'm coming to sleep. Uh, you'll be in my dreams, darling. Don't you worry That's about right. that. <laughs> All right, dear. I'll yeah. see you. Take care. All right. Love you anyway, man. I wasn't interested in a relationship with a man. My focus is on God. Thank you so much. You're okay, everybody. You're the yes, ma'am. I'm off to see the wizard. New wife. And um, here we are. <laughs> Appreciate life better. All the journeys of the past, I wouldn't change a thing, no matter how tragic it may have been. Uh, anything that would alter me being with my best friend, and the person I love very much. And, and this woman. Do you take this woman to be your wedding wife? I do. I pronounce that they are husband and wife in the name of our Father and the Son and of uh, the Holy Ghost. Kiss your bride. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's put your hands together. At first, I didn't feel the need to have to be here. But today is like the first time I've seen him and since my mother passed. My mother passed in 89. Well, you know, there was a couple it allows me to do the forgiveness that I probably should have done. I, I would like to honor my wife, Suzette Goodwin. I'd like to honor her the best. 
and when I see her, I know that God loves me. To you, Suzanne, in the name of Jesus. Salute. Bring it on home to me. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You ain't never got to worry about Al leaving you. You hear me? Al going to be laying right beside you, holding you in my arms. Hug, yeah. Huggy, huggy, kissy, kissy. Yeah. All the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you so silly. It's all about you now, mommy. <laughs> Dad, too much sex. <laughs> too much sex? <laughs> You're the most beautiful thing in the world. Oh, shut up. No, I'm not going to shut up. <laughs> I'm going to tell the world. Bring it on home to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, yeah. I know I, I done, done you wrong. wrong. But, baby, da, I'm da, on da, bending da, 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 da. knee. <laughs> oh, bring it to me. Bring your sweet love in. Bring it on home to me. me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh. That's good. Yeah. All right. yeah, okay, very good. Yeah. See how it kind of hangs? You don't want it hanging this way. You want it hanging under, where it lays against the, the thing. No? That's it. We get different people that walk into here, and I first was alerted by other people. They go, he has nunchucks in his back pocket, and then I had other students, do you want us to take care of him, take him out? I'm like, no, he seems fine, you know? <laughs> you know, and I came up and talked to Jason, and, and he was really respectful, really nice, and I said, well, I kind of like this guy, you know? Then one day, he just came up to me, and he said, I'm gonna start next month. Now come straight. No, that's sideways, straight. Straight, do his head, do his head. Straight, come on! Okay. okay, so now when you do it again, then you go straight. Jason is moving forward with his life and listening to what we're saying and, and knowing that, that he's in control of the way he wants to live his life. He's in control of his reality, and I think he's starting to really understand that. What originally drew me here was like, like, because uh, I was having a hard time with the heroin. drugs and drug abuse and getting high. It was like an escape and it was a way to get aggression out. But like this is like um, a way to get peace in. Nothing really has ever made me feel like this. It might have already saved my life. <laughs> These friends, I truly look up to. And I'm choosing to be around people who I see actually are doing something with their lives, you know? This just feels like a family. He's our, he's our brother now. Yeah. Yep. He's part of our family. He's, he's our brother. And we've got his back no matter what. Remember that, Jason. Nobody home.